Hey guys, it's Randy here coming at you with another casual upload and episode of the Defense Saga. This is just a Defense Peer Iron Man build that we've been progressing over the years and I've really gotten some amazing achievements done on this account but I want to progress it as far as it possibly can go. So that's what we're doing once again in today's episode and therefore I wanted to showcase the progress over the last month or so and get you guys up to date on where the account is. So the last time you saw this account, I had gone back to Dagonoth Rex, but without the redemption alt method, which required over 36 accounts, and instead, there's a new method with a combination of DFS specking being buffed, as well as using recoils and death piling food. The problem with this method is it does use a lot of recoils, and I have only a select amount from back whenever the raid smuggle worked where I could enchant as many of these recoils as possible. I did about 2,000 at the time, which took me around 30 hours smuggling the boost out of raid raids and now we're down to less than a thousand recoils left. I can get more now from Magpie since they updated them, but they are rare and hard to get. Now I've showcased this raid smuggle in many videos before, but I wanted to give it another try and see if there was a new method of actually enchanting recoils so I could achieve more of these because I have a lot of gold bars in the bank and a lot of sapphires. I can make these a lot quicker than I could catching magpies if I do run out soon here. But unfortunately, after a lot of testing on my other account, I could only make one or two recoils before the boost would go down because there's a 60 second clearance until your stats decrease from the previous level. And just farming Kodai potions on another Iron Man account to give to this Iron Man account in itself took a few minutes and then I would have to get everything prepared to smuggle the boost out which is about 10 minutes for one singular inventory but now not even an inventory more like one or two recoils max and that's because there is no more fake log that allows the timer to never go down which you did combine with the interface walking as seen here and that's gonna mean it's pretty much just worth it for me to go make a magpie farm instead I discussed this idea in an older episode with Lucky Implings and just sitting accounts at Piro Piro with this Runelight plugin that Discord hooks and it'll allow me to alert myself on which world possibly these magpies are in if I make a lot of 17 Hunter accounts. I do need a lot of raw GP as well to convert planks for construction as well as do some other skilling tasks so this magpie farm is definitely something I'm going to be looking into in the future of this account and you can look forward to that in future videos but for now we have about a thousand recoils left. Let's see if we can get the Dragon Axe from Dagonoth Rex, as that's why I came back here. I already had the B-Ring, I just really wanted some skilling resources. So I'm wasting countless rings of recoil, and I did get another Berserker Ring. A nice piece of jewelry, but something I did not need and already had. And that got me thinking about jewelry, because I just realized I've never had a piece of jewelry besides my wedding ring. Some nice jewelry would be good. Not in the game, but in real life. And that brings me to our sponsor, Halskern. I think I butchered that. I'm not Austrian, okay, but the brand is. They actually make tons of jewelry, like watches and necklaces for men and women alike. And when I say tons, I mean they have over 1,000 designs. Yeah, their website is full of all kinds of unique and quality jewelry that I didn't even know I needed it until I tried it out. And honestly, I look stunning. I'm not gonna lie. Halskern was actually founded as a small business in Austria. All of their products are made from natural materials. Their grains allow for every product to be truly unique. They have wood FSC certified, no deforestation. They have more than 10 physical stores spread out over Austria and Germany, and their portfolio carries an astonishing 1,000 plus designs. Personally, I love the watch the most. This is a flashy, quality watch that I was able to easily adjust even on my own. You truly do not know what you're missing here, and I didn't either until I tried out their products. So thank you to Halskern for sponsoring this video, and you can find your own sense of fashion by going to halskern.com forward slash Rindy, or by using my link in the description below, or this QR code you see on screen now. As well, that's 15% off by using my code Rindy. Back to Rex and wasting all of my recoils. We got two from Nick Blades that trip and I was able to die, and I do this after my fourth kill and my inventory runs out. I go collect my Gommel's Hilts, which there's about 19 for the entire process. I have more in the bank, but I might as well pull out everything of Death's Coffer that I can. So I set my gravestone back in the Rex Cave. That means I don't have to go all the way back through just to set my gravestone there. This is why I die during every trip. And now I can simply go recharge my shield at the center of Karend in the dungeon there. I don't want to waste my Dragonfire bottles once again because I might need those at a future date. Once my shield is then recharged, I go to the farming guild and I start stacking death piles in my original gravestone, which I sat back at Rex about five minutes ago. I do this by, obviously, as you can see, using these Gommel's hilts one per trip. 
I pull out three items that protect over everything else, which is the lobsters and the gommel's hilt, and I die about 19 times now, plus the original first death from the trip. So that's where 19 of my hilts go. And this allows me to then acquire about 510 lobsters for each trip, which is four kills if I'm lucky. If my DFS spec hits zero more often than not, then sometimes it'll only be three kills per trip. So we're looking at three to four total Dagonoth Rex kills per hour with this method, which is about the same as the Redemption Alt method, but the perk here is I do not have to use 36 accounts and rely on friends. I can just go back and do this with literally two accounts at times, sometimes one as I log out of the other one eventually. So my closest teleporter, unfortunately, is the Fremenic Slayer dungeon with the Slayer Rings. From here I run to Waterbirth Island and I don't have that 1000 coin fee, thank god. I just have a lot of recoils on me, a couple of lobsters and a brew. Here's where I use my first alt to just basically navigate myself through the cave without using too much supplies as well you need two people to stand on there or a pet rock. And you need a rune throwing axe to get through one set of the doors, which I'm not 40 range, so I can't use that. That's why I pretty much need this alt. As well, I then lure all the NPCs towards the middle on the alt with the bulwark, so then I can put my actual defense pier in place without dying, back where its death pile was with the 500 lobsters. And then once I'm in place, I can run that alt back upstairs, and just kind of make it look like the Rex cave is more occupied than it is if someone peeks through and sees only one person inside. From here, I temporarily log into a third alt, and this is where I wait for Rex to respawn and throw an airstrike at this NPC, hitting a one or two, but luckily Rex has insanely fast regen rate of his hit points, so he'll go back up to full HP before the 20 seconds tick down and he takes damage from Venom, which converts to poison because he is immune to Venom. This is a huge benefit just using this first poison stack as it takes down a lot of his hit points, and I would be wasting a lot more recoils per kill if I did not get this first poison damage off on Rex. Fun, interesting fact though, the apparent beta going on right now is going to null Venomaltine, specifically magic based Venomaltine. My higher mage accounts like this are going to be hitting up to fives now with airstrikes on NPCs and therefore kind of nullifying this passive ability to take damage control on the Iron Man. So my alt here is taking a lot of damage from Spinalips, well not a lot, but he's staying in combat so I have to exlog out of Runelite to get him offline there and just save his resources, but I'll log back in after this kill. I'm constantly using recoils, picking up food and eating, trying to out-eat Dagonoth Rex's hits with no armor on, and even with 85 defense, this comes very close in many instances. So I do use the DFS spec when I can every two minutes, which nullifies its 10 HP per minute regen health, because on average a DFS hits between 15 and 25, making it 20, as long as I don't roll a miss, which is hard to do on an NPC like this, and why I chose to take on an NPC like this, because its magic level is one, therefore having zero magic defense. But we do get the kill, and we get another Addy Axe. So we're now over 150 kill count, still have not gotten a Dragon Axe, which is a 1 in 128 on average drop, actually 7 in 128. That Fremenic Blade right there is on that drop table, and that's also a 7 in 128. Another Fremenic Blade, I think that's like 6 now, we're on KC 155. I've spent a lot of time at Soul Wars while editing, and we're very close now to 99 HP, our first 99 combat stat. I chose this over defense first because I want to recoil NPCs like Rex there and stay lower defense as long as possible. I think this took me on and off after getting 74 HP, I'd say like 8 months. So there we go, 99 HP, that's a big one. I can also use the skill cape, which is going to be helpful in a lot of scenarios, especially if I ever go back to fight caves. I actually have to go into this rancid, like, dead content area here to get my hit points cape. This place just looks like utter shit, I'm not gonna lie. And the duel arena, let's bring it back, to be honest, people are just DMing anyway, it's unregulated. All the content here just looks hideous and is irrelevant, so... Give me the skill cape, I'm gonna use that in the future for some boss encounters, maybe even some wrecks. Let's do it. Another off the 128 table, a rune axe. That's actually like the fifth rune axe I've gotten as well. Gotten all these rune axes, all these addy axes, but no dragon axe still. That's all I want. And I don't even really necessarily need it. I kind of wanted to try it for some clue juggling, as there's going to be a clue scroll update soon, but I don't know. I don't really need it. I'm already like 95 woodcutting, but I, I kind of just wanted it. I'm still looking for a stale baguette, but instead we got an easy clue from that mystery box. If you remember, like episode four, I got literally a D med out of a mystery box, but still no stale baguette. A few hours later, we've got an affirmative helm, another 1 in 126 drop off that table, and this is my fourth Fremenic Helm, I believe, maybe third. 
I'm, I'm losing count at this point, but still no DX. So we started this Rex grind with around 117 kill count and 1100 rings of recoil. Now we have around 700 rings left, which is not good as you can see. Hopefully we get this soon or else I'm going to be stuck at magpies for a few months. Honestly, I need more recoils anyways and I need some raw GP and magpies have a lot of that. So I'm not going to be that disappointed, but come on, we have to be getting this soon, right? I wanted to take a break from the depressing journey of wasting all of my hard-earned recoils and do some clues I had in the bank from Clue Nest. Yes, I've been woodcutting with a rune axe and getting Clue Nest. I've been woodcutting mahogany sometimes in my spare time AFK. I've surprisingly done a lot of steps on this hard clue and this could be the final step here if I'm lucky. I usually don't get these done with one clue. It's almost impossible, but now I think I've gotten my sixth hard clue completed and 11 purple sweets. I will take that. I need purple sweets for future fire cape attempts because obviously we're going for a jad pet someday. It's only 130 hours per cape, right? So I like this area. It's kind of depopulated. I can just teleport back with my farming cape and sometimes I do the forestry events, sometimes I don't. Sawmill vouchers will be nice, but yeah, I'm going to need about 48 mil cash and 36,000 mahogany logs cut. I have about 28,000 right now. And that's by doing mahogany homes for construction, which is actually half the plank count. I've been cutting mahoganies for so long. I'm just committed at this point and I have over a thousand stamina potions and some decent teleports. So I think I can get 99 construction soon as long as I get the 48 mil cash stack. And we're using these once again in mahogany homes, which is like half the amount I would need if I was doing the full normal construction, which would mean I would be spending over 100 mil on planks at that point. We're maxing our construction out, we're maxing our skills out, it's going to be huge. Construction is one of the best skill capes in the game, giving me four additional teleport options to areas that I'm not even close to at this point because I'm one magic and have very limited quest access. We're now at around 200 KC and another Addy Axe. Two hours since my last recording, nothing special, but now we've gotten a Fermanic Helm. I believe that's like, our, I don't even know, I lost count. I'm not even going to attempt to give that a number. Just what I needed, a 7th Fremenic Blade, 209kc. Five hours later, we've gotten an Addy Axe. Alright, it is time. I now have some GP, not a lot. I know I just mentioned that I needed 48 mil for 99 construction, and this is kind of counterproductive to that grind, but I really need this Ferox Enclave spawn, and this is going to allow me to use a lot of Rings of Life in my bank with Rock Cakes. That'll put me back in this very hub access location. And it's a great spawn. I just spent five mil over half my GP pile, but it's also gonna be great for death piling lobsters. As you can see here, once I get back, I don't even need my farming cape to get to the bank. I respawn very close to a bank and I'm just gonna grab more lobsters and their gumballs hilt and head back. So it's a little bit quicker of a method of death piling these lobsters, but as well in the future, Rock Cake plus Ring of Life is going to allow us to have a lot of access to areas by the Ferox Enclave. You also have that pool that regens your run, and eventually I'll even have a defense cape that will act as a Ring of Life at all times, so I won't have to be wasting my Ring of Lives. But also, we're likely going to farm magpies, so we'll have a few of those to spare. This is actually like my third tooth half of a key from this NPC, so I don't know how rare it is. I don't know. I've been getting everything but the Dragon Axe at this point, and we have almost 230 kill count almost twice the rate. And there it is, our first warrior ring. I was waiting for this moment. We're almost two times dry on this as well, so it's kind of due. That's now officially ever unique, except for the dragon axe that I've acquired. The warrior ring's not going to be that useful. I can see it maybe helping in, in like one instance of wielding an iron 2H for like max slash bonus, plus the imbued warrior ring while using Poison Dynamite as I think Slash is the highest attack bonus I can get and Poison Dynamite rolls off your highest attack bonus. So maybe something there. Rockshell Plate Body, I did get that during the Redemption grind. So this will be my second one. And we also have Rockshell Legs also. So um, we have pretty much the full set. And I can wear that now because I did get Fermanic Trials done back in episode. I don't even know I lost count. I can't even make this up and the next drop is literally rock shell legs which i just said i already have so now we have two sets of rock shell those can be stored in the house though and i'm likely never going to wear those in my life okay another rock shell plate body the third one once again this is a 1 in 128 drop table item but not the dragon axe and our 100th fremenic blade so this is coming down to the wire 429 recoils left i originally was going to stop at 400 but it's all or nothing at this point we're getting the dragon axe or running out of recoils i don't care and like i said the dragon axe isn't even that important i just need to commit to this goal 
another fresh pair of rock shell legs. I don't even want to know what the drop rate on this is because I've never seen this in my life. So I went to the rogues den and this guy buys things at high alk value at least for the first item. So it's uh, very useful to use his shop for GP and I have a lot of stuff from just Empleens, Theater Blood Runs, all kinds of stuff that I need to get rid of and I do need more cash so here we are. Unfortunately I did sell my dragon scimitar. I'll have to get another one of those at some point. I just realized because I will need a dragon scimitar to show somebody for a master clue step apparently. Also after doing the feud you have access to Ali's shop which he has no minimum rate of buying runes that he always buys them for a flat price. Although it's a little bit less than high alk you can just sell mass amounts and here we are already back up to 3 mil from nothing. I make sure and even tan the black dehydes I get from, I don't even remember where, some kind of impaling probably, and craft them, then sell them, as well as use crystal keys on the crystal chest and craft jewelry with all the extra gems and sell those as well to the rogues trader. Apparently you can sell those to the port serum jewelry shop I found out though and buy them off of main to keep the stock low. Didn't know that was a shared shop, but that might come in handy in the future. I've played over 60 hours in just a few days on this account, so I figured I'd give myself a break by playing on another account that I'm working on in the background. <laughs> I figured I'd give myself a break from RuneScape by playing RuneScape on another RuneScape account. I'm doing some star mining. I also do want that Celestial Ring for the mining bonus, just for pretty much anywhere and everything. I also eventually do want the cosmetic upgrade to the Prospector outfit I just got in the last episode, I believe. So we're here AFK mining some stars. But I'll get back to Rex soon. I should have never insulted the Fremenic Blade. This thing is haunting me now for life. Okay, another 1 in 128 drop. The Fremenic Shield, I do have one of these, but I don't have like 10 of them like the Blade, so I'll take it. Another Berserker Ring. So now I have three, only one imbued. I guess I should just go ahead and imbue the others. I don't even know what to do with them. Not Death's Coffer. It's not even worth it. It's only like 4 mil. A Fremenic Shield. So I wasn't disappointed in getting the second one, but the third one... It's a bit too much. So I looked this thing up. Apparently it's a 1 in 1,000 drop. So now we've gotten a 1 in 1,000 drop and a 1 in 4,000 drop being the shield left half, which happened in that older episode. But yeah, I don't know how we can get these, but not a dragon axe, man. Another 1 in 128 right after that. Death's Coffer is looking more and more feasible every day for these Berserker Rings, that is. I should have never complimented the Fermanic Shield because now I've got four of them. I accidentally scuffed up this kill and airstriked Rex twice so he never regen to full so I had to kill him to reset him basically. I was going to be so mad if my alt there just somehow pulled a dragon axe on its very first KC ever on Rex but luckily it was just a few coins. Yes this is the real Rindy please back up if you step any closer that motherfucker is going to turn around and negate the okay we're good. Oh look another 1 in 1000 drop. Isn't that handy? I'm tired of this old ass bucket shaped helm. I mean, I might as well wear it because um, it's extra defense bonus. And I sit here for two minutes waiting for the respawn anyway, so yeah. I tell you what, this guy never has actually out DPS'd me just eating lobsters and I'm surprised because I've gotten very close a few times. I bring the bruise to do some emergency combo eats with. What the hell is the drop rate on an adamant bar? No comment. I didn't think it would come down to this, but this is KC329, and this is the last kill of the trip. We have enough recoils, I think, for literally one more trip. Not an exaggeration. That's, we're about to deplete our entire recoil stash and be three times drop rate on the Dragon Axe. So yeah, 23 rings of recoil. I think I'll have three left over, you know, just in case. Just in case of emergency purposes. You know, I don't know where the hell I'd even be able to use three, re three recoils and get anything done, but I'm sending it, man. I'm sending it, I believe. More smithing XP. This is it, this is the final kill. This has to be the axe. If it's not, our life is over. I mean, our period in time at uh, Dagonoth Rex is over and our life in the game is over because I'm going to die to get back to Ferox Enclave, but yeah. Hopefully we don't have to um, do that. Hopefully we grab the dragon axe and run upstairs and teleport here. One, two damage. That's not a dragon axe. That's a steel plate body. Maybe we can break that down in Giant's Foundry. You gotta look at the bright side, right? So 333 Dagonoth Rex kills. No dragon axes, almost three times drop rate. 
We've spent about 80 hours here. That's not including the 30 hours it took to make the recoils way back when. We spent a lot of time here and unfortunately our endeavors for now are over, but not forever. We'll eventually form a magpie farm, kind of how I talked about in the past, probably with about 20 accounts just sitting around in Piro Piro. Get a bunch of GP, get a bunch of hard clues that we can juggle as well as some more recoils, probably like another thousand. Hopefully we don't have to use that thousand though because we're well overdue for the drop anyways. Okay, this is not the magpie farm, but I have been alerted of a couple of magpies near the ham hideout. So we caught one, no more recoils, and here's another one in a separate world. And I believe I don't get recoils off this one either. Nope, just two ruined bars. So smithing XP again, common theme throughout this video. All right, I did get a lucky impling scout given to me for free once again from my best friend, but we got a dragon longsword, nothing special. I read about rogues, castle, um, who am I kidding? I didn't read shit. I just watched a video on it. Anyways, there's this new method where you can kind of trap the rogues off of rogues chest with a D spear and an alt possibly gather clues on my defense pier, like hard clues, and now there's a one hour juggle timer, so that means we can juggle hard clues and actually get them done without having to drop them on the floor because we can't do two thirds of the steps. Uh, that's besides the point. I wanna get some hard clues done, and uh, I'm trying out this method of luring the rogues out and seeing if it actually works. I've never done this before. I've never even been inside this castle before, so this will be definitely interesting. It would also help if I had a Wilderness Hard Diary account, but unfortunately my only good alt is 40 defense as well. That's why I have to use this skewer here to hit the rogues first before I even use my D-Spear and special attack them. From here, you basically pile all these rogues in this little spot here and then close the door on them. And hopefully they keep aggro so they will never like reset their position after five minutes, which happens if they do not keep aggro. So I've got one rogue at the back of the castle in that little horizontal space with the spear. I've got this other rogue here trapped behind the wall. So all's good. Everything else, the other like five rogues are trapped between those two doors, but they'll still be trapped there as long as I'm only using these two chests and re remaining uh, aggressive towards them. What the hell is that? Did that guy just walk through the wall? I relured the guy outside, but everything else is now messed up. They're respawning even though they were aggressive towards me. I think I walked one tile too far west and got them out of aggro, and then they just ended up respawning at their spawn points, like right there. But right now, I realized I'm like a big boy daddy tank anyways, and I can search these for quite a while before I run out of lobsters. And you know, we have 65,000 lobsters still in the bank. So I'm just gonna do this for now, eat, and then it'll force me to bank every now and then so I don't get PK'd. I'm also in a 1500 total world at a very low combat, being 46 I believe, so not many PKers are gonna be able to attack me. Anyone over the level of 100 with you know, 1500 total is the norm. I might find a few one defense really high total skill PKers every now and then, but I doubt I'll find much more than that out here. It's like I predicted the future. There's a high skill total, one defense peer attacking me now. So I'm just gonna use these stairs, I think, as escape. I don't know if this is the, the meta, but it seems to be pretty good besides the fact that I just had to walk two steps there if I got frozen just to go up the stairs. That's kind of annoying. But yeah, we logged out, so it works. I guess that's what I'm gonna be utilizing from now on. So we're stacking up hard clues, but there's like a really big clan in here. I don't trust that. There has to be one of those people like under 100 combat. So we are hopping. We are getting out of this world and we are banking because we also have no food left. So it's super amazing. The new clue update allows you to have clues on the ground for an hour. And since they're non-tradable, they hop worlds with you. So if I can't do a step, I'll just drop the clue I'm on and then continue on the previous step. The ones on the ground track the steps just like your current clue. Unless you get a reward casket like me right now, then it resets all the steps of the clues on the ground. This made it way easier. And pretty much if I have five clues on the ground, it's a guaranteed hard clue completion because that's six steps as long as I start with them on the ground from step one. This master clue I can also surprisingly do. So I'm dropping clues I can't do to the west whereas the clues I can do to the east just to kind of keep track of that because no matter what kind of clue it is it's going to stay on the ground for an hour and I don't want to get these mixed up. I would say yeah about 50% of the clues I collect I cannot do. It takes a while to get a three stack or even a five stack for an almost guaranteed clue completion but here we got another one and I honestly need like three or four. My build, unless I have just very bad luck, can complete a hard clue with four active hard clues. This is one of the very few gear steps I can do on hard clues. I think there's two, maybe three max I can do. Weirdly enough, I did not go into combat with this guy as I expected to. He just popped up immediately. 
I would have a lot worse of a time with this if I did not have Mortania access. Thank God I have the best account in the world, you know, and we're able to just teleport to Morton and do clue steps like that instantly. Three rune fullhams and a rune axe, nothing special. One thing I have noticed that's very disadvantageous towards me during these hard clues I'm doing now versus previously is the fact that I wasted all of my recoils. I really should have not been an idiot and reserved some for activities such as this because now I have to rely on poisoning the Sarah Delman wizards within like the first two minutes I fight them or I have to reset them because they despawn after 10 minutes and it's very hard to pull a DFS spec on them as well which I will have to do on top of the poison to max out their 100 120 HP that they have and it takes just a lot longer to do these steps sometimes I have to bank I ran out of food even after multiple attempts at poisoning the Ceridoman wizards I've had one of these Ceridoman wizard steps take like four attempts and 40 minutes to complete so these hard clues are not easy for me at all they take roughly anywhere from if I'm really lucky 10 minutes to as bad as like an hour and a half for one hard clue completion even with the juggled clues on the other hand, I actually love wilderness steps on these hard clues because you get things like these Zami wizards which have only 76 HP and a lot less defense mage wise and just stab wise so I'm able to poison these a lot quicker. Almost always I'm guaranteed to kill even if other NPCs are on me like these chaos dwarves they don't really pose a threat and for some reason they splash on me insanely often even though they're 80 magic and I'm 1 magic which doesn't make much sense maybe that's that stats wrong or something I don't know but I'm gonna take it as well my DFS spec triggers on them a lot more because they have less mage what is that why did we get a Robin Hood hat if I was any other type of account I feel like that would be an amazing hard clue reward at this early in the hard clue game but I'm never going to be able to wear that that's kind of annoying that's a good clue I had a Rindy spur of genius moment here or at least I thought I'm going to make nitroglycerin, uh, not just the explosive potions, they only do 25 damage, but if I make nitroglycerin and have the guy inside the exam center identified as nitroglycerin, they do up to 35 damage, so 10 more. And if I add a poison karamba on top of that, that's 40 damage. I'm not sure if you can self-inflict these two items together to maybe kill your own account, but it might be possible as it looks like you could possibly combo eat it. I've really truly never tried this out, let's see, you can same ticket, that's, that's hopeful. And wow, yeah, I did over 38 damage to my account and killed it instantly. And that was stalled that whole time. So say if I take this to Rogue's Castle and see someone hop in next to me, even with Rogue's on me, I can drop these on the ground, be stalled so they never get any damage off on me and kill myself and transport all my items back to a grave instead of to the person who's attacking me. This could be extremely helpful and it's not as reliant on, you know, waiting for the Rogue's to kill me or waiting for the chest to kill me whenever you actually have to click it multiple times. And I can sit at 40 HP instead of at like 10 HP for those other methods and my high defense doesn't really matter so death's coffer here is just like something I can withdraw my loot out of or my gravestone here for instance and really have zero risk with PvP here. okay so I got this step again and this is where I'm confused now he's an actual attackable NPC I tried hopping around and redoing the step to see if I could get him to not be attackable and just talk to me again but every time I resummoned him after like six attempts he was attackable every single time, so I'm expecting at this point that I just have to kill him and get on with it. One theory I have, I believe in my last video when I killed my first double agent ever on this account was I accepted his clue and instantly teleported away, not going through his entire dialogue. So maybe somehow the game attracts and thinks that I have still already killed the original agent from any clue step as long as I don't finish his dialogue. We'll try this out this time by getting interrupted anyways by the vampires during his dialogue, not being able to complete it, and we'll see next time if he is summoned as an attackable or just a talk to NPC. My guess is it's going to be a talk to NPC. Having these hard combat achievements completed is also awesome because once again we get infinite teleports to the Trollheim area without needing Death Plateau quests, which gives attack XP, so we can't do Death Plateau quests, our only entryway is through the Gommel's Hilt. And fortunately there's a clue step here that we can do that adds to our clue steps in total. I actually do have all of these items, but I cannot wield the Rune Spear. I did get a Herald of Kelm last episode, but unfortunately, yeah, we were one attack. So once again, if I get a clue like that, I can't do it. I just drop it, come back here, pick up a new one that I can do that I saved because there's an hour timer on it, then go do that step and it carries on from the previous steps. Being that I only have to poison the Zami Mage once because of his low HP, I typically just Red X him or block him around an obstacle if there is one. Unfortunately, some of these spawns there is none, 
Also, rarely these NPCs do drop weird battle staves, which I can sell for GP later on. I can't wield them because I'm not 30 attack and 30 mage, of course. But yeah, there's just a lot of clue steps I can't do, and that's the unfortunate thing about hard clues. But you might be asking yourself, why am I even doing hard clues? Because there's not a lot of loot from it. You really want to know? I hate how the glory looks. Glory is my best in slot because I get it from Dragon Implings. I don't need magic to enchant it, but I can't get a Fury, and a Fury looks so much better. There's so many amulets that look so much better than just a normal glory, and one of those is a glory trimmed. I really want that from a hard clue. I think it's around a 1 in 300 if you count all the rolls at getting it, something around there, and that's what I'm looking for as well. Maybe an ornament boot kit for Dragon Boots, which I eventually will get after Slayer on this account. Now, remember this event right here that you're watching because it's going to play a role in what comes next. Uh, this was really annoying. This guy kept closing the door in front of my face, and this is like a diagonal, funky, janky looking door, and it makes me repath every time I want to reopen it. So I really don't like this door. Just keep that in mind. But I did somehow escape this guy with 35 hit points and literal lobsters and no food left at this point. So that was fun. Once again, there's a lot of these steps I can do. And I want you to also keep this in mind because throughout this entire journey of thieving rogues chest, I plan on going to 99 thieving. And I want you to see how many clues I'm able to complete from 99 thieving. As well, I can't get a ring wealth eye, so it is a 1 in 100 chance of each clue from the chest. But still, I can do a lot more clues than a normal restricted account because I have more tiny access, like this one here in the nightmare area. So it kind of makes up for me not having Ring of Wealth Eye. I also have Gommel's Hilt 3, the Hard Diaries completed, so I get an extra 5% chance of hard clues literally anywhere in the game. So that's a little bit more of an extra boost. But I really don't get a lot of clues done in this entire journey for as much time that's put into these. Like, I'm talking about an average of maybe one hard clue completion per two hours of gameplay. And there still is a lot of steps I can't do, like this Berg de Rot one. There's a few Berg de Rot steps. There's other locations like Apatol, anywhere in the Elven territory I can't access because a lot of these quest lines give prayer or attack or, or whatever XP, you know. But watch this. If you didn't know, you can actually trick the game into thinking you're in Berg de Rot and Hop Worlds, and there's a failsafe that kicks you out back to the guy who you start Shades of Morton with. Interesting fact. Uh, I found on accident a few years ago, but yeah. Alright, here's another hard casket. We had to drop a couple clues, but not too many. A rune pickaxe and a rune dagger. Nothing great. Sometimes I let my loot just stack up in Death's Coffer, and like this here is a big haul. It'll actually play a role, not only in hard clues by coming to rogues, but actually just in the 48 mil I need for construction. So I found another way to lure rogues that's not like actually stupid and makes a lot more sense. And that was simply just taking them to the tile south of that entrance there, and while standing south of that tile south of the entrance, spearing them diagonally. And this would send them to that location there, where they're all stuck now. Every room you spear them in, they get stuck. So even if I were to walk around to that chest east, they would still be stuck, because it acts as like a wall is there, because they're not technically supposed to be in these rooms. At least that's how they're coded. So we get all of them stuck here. We keep the regression by thieving from this east chest and refreshing it every few seconds, so the five minute respawn timer never acts up. And we don't even really need food anymore. I was just an idiot before and now found a better method. Yeah. So now I'm going to be sitting at rogues longer. I figured I'd actually use my method I was talking about earlier and make some poison carambons to go with the nitroglycerin I banked. We can possibly, yah, just kill our account whenever we see a PKer. That is in our combat bracket. That's going to be kind of hard to decide if they're in my combat bracket quick enough though because there is a lot of PKers that hop in and most are not in my combat bracket and I'm going to have to not tempt myself from like panic eating an explosive and karam and killing myself when it's not really necessary. You know what else I realize now that there's no NPCs on me at all whatsoever? I'm staying below 40 HP doing this like really high tech method of like killing my account if I need to without taking player damage. But now that nothing is on me, I literally could just log out. Also, we made a new friend in our body here, 1600. He's a good dude. So we're looking at about 150k thieving XP per hour whenever you remove the clue scrolls. If I'm doing this straight up like I am now, and possibly I'm debating on juggling a lot more clue scrolls, we're looking at more of a... 250k xp per hour and we can get thieving done and focus on thieving then focus on clues i actually kind of want to juggle clues on the ground all the way until 99 thieving and just see how many i can get since they last an hour on the ground i mean why not so i am going to go bank by using my little death potion here and that allows me to put some supplies away you know just in case a pk -er comes every now and then but i will be juggling more clues on the ground 1600 who i just met here also has an alt account with Wilderness Hard Diaries done so he can direct me straight from this obelisk 
to the one near Rogue's Castle. So I kind of joined like a group of people who were like doing rogues chests together and we would set up these worlds with these rogues like that stacked in the hut. But I feel kind of bad because I'm witnessing like all out war and nobody can attack me. I just am witnessing my fellow comrades just falling to the floor and dying and can't do anything to help them. Like literally look at this. This is insanity. I'm going to go back but this time with food and a looting bag. I totally forgot looting bags were a thing. I don't go in the wilderness very often, at least not since they came out. Yeah, I used to be K all the time, and it's been like 10 years at this point. But I find it kind of ironic because I remember when they did originally come out, they were meant for literally looting people's loot off the ground. And now they're meant for like bossing scenarios and skilling scenarios like here by just leaving it open and putting direct loot from the chest into my looting bag rather than the now keys that exist for PKers that get automatically added to their inventory. If you haven't noticed, yeah, this place is very active. Luckily, once again, I'm a super low combat level with high total. So every now and then I just have like a one death peer with high total that finds me and attacks me single-handedly without a group, which has a very low chance of killing me with all the anglers and brews I have in combo eats. The honestly more annoying part is relogging onto my alt here, skewering rogues and then de-spearing them waiting for my spec to go back up. Light bearer helped a little bit here but still it would take about like three minutes per relure if they messed that up and decided to attack the NPCs. I did realize the Nezi helm has magic defense bonus for a helmet. I had no idea so I'm not even bringing the swap now for that in case I do get attacked by a PK or honestly any mage defense bonus at this point is pretty irrelevant as I'm one magic defense because I'm one magic. I honestly should just camp the justiciar i don't think it'll really matter much but we do have a lot more clues on the ground and i plan to take this as far as i can never mind i'm not going to 99 with clue stacks it looks like a friend told me that server updates clear the clues on the ground i don't know if this is true but i'm not going to take my chances so we're going to die one by one with three items with the clue scrolls to send them back to ferox enclave and use one of our friends wilderness hard diary accounts to keep redirecting me back here so i can kind of get all the clue scrolls in like a conglomerated area next to a bank that i can easily access once we get these all in the ferox enclave that's when i'll start doing them and juggling them every hour here instead of all the way back at the castle All right, so I just dumped all of my clues I got over the last two levels on the ground in Ferox, and I've noticed there's a predicament. I'm missing a ring of elements. I don't even know how this happened. Um, it's just literally gone. I haven't died yet at Rogue's Castle to another player. So I'm even more confused. I really don't know what's happening. I'm checking my death's coffer right now. It's just not there. It's literally gone. My bank was full and I, I did do a lot of uh, deposit all wielded items. I tweeted out this problem to see if anyone else had this before and I didn't even mention how it happened and someone literally said, yeah, I had my bank full one time and I actually lost my ring of elements. Another person said, you'll know if you lost this to another player or to a glitch if you get it back and it still has ruins in it because it keeps that in some kind of like invisible setting. So I guess I have to get it back now. I even have recorded footage of me using the ring last night for a clue step and since then today I've done nothing but Rogue's Castle and I had my friend even with me who verified I did not ever die to a PvP death, only to a death I inflicted myself as you can see with this explosive potion and I came back though right after that my grave was there but as you can see in the next clip where I check my bank it's missing at that point in time early on in the day before I even really got into the whole rogues chest for the day so I really don't know what happened here but all I know now is I have to complete these clues with little to no navigation because my ring is super important to this account's navigation and I'm going to be running all over the place with weird pathing. So I'm going to get these clues done, get them out of the way, and then I guess I'm going to have to spend two extra days at Guardians of the Rift because 400 pearls is a lot. Luckily we have about 150 in the bank from just some extra runecrafting I did, but 250 is a lot. That's a lot of hours for this account with low runecrafting, trust me. I'm not looking forward to this at all. But the first thing I'm doing, as I saw in that tweet, is getting rid of some bank items I don't need because I don't want this happening again. 
I don't trust having a full bank. Maybe my ring was uncharged and I tried to put it in the slot of the charged ring or something and it got uncharged. I used its last teleport and then it just disappeared or something. I don't know. It was some weird bug. The bugs are fighting back, okay? Let's continue though. So as you can see, a lot of these fairy ring steps I can do, there are like pathways to get in near the fairy rings. Some of them are in really weird locations, but others, even though I have access to miscellanea, I, I can't do it because there's no, you know, agility obstacle or path to get to that island. It's kind of like useless. I don't even know why there's a fairy ring there, to be honest. It's literally 100% useless other than for this clue step. So I can get to that fairy ring down there south of it, um, where there is another clue step though. So yeah, it's a hit or miss. Another step I can do actually is this one during the Grand Tree quest. You don't need the Grand Tree totally completed to get in this area. Sadly, I've been in this area so many times that I think I actually memorized the three words you need to say to get through the gate because I don't have the quest done. I, I do have to manually enter those every single time, but there is another Ceridoman wizard here that I can fight. All right, we got another hard casket after some drops and an actual unique that I can wear. That's that's pretty cool. I haven't gotten one of these since the Heraldic Helm in the last episode. I also looked like I would have gotten a master clue, but I forgot to drop the one I have currently. I don't think I'm going to be able to juggle enough master clues anyways to get those done anytime soon. I need some requirements first. Just rejuggling on the hour every hour to make sure these do not disappear off the ground. We do still have a lot to do. And like I said, with limited navigation, it's taken a little bit longer than normal. By far one of the most annoying Ceridoman wizards I've ever fought. I've had to come back here now three times. It's a far trek, but the fourth time is a charm as we've got a DFS spec over 20 and the poison off on him so that's a guaranteed kill i might be going crazy but i do not remember this barricade here blocking that dig spot i swear i just did this clue step not long ago and that was not there but i found a quick solution to this that's by going diagonal of it you can do any clue step in a dig tile of one radius around it so i don't have to go around that wall there for that step cool thing i guess but i swear that was not there before honestly any clue reward i get purple sweets i cannot complain and that is a lot of purple sweets and my prediction was correct i summoned a yuri that did not have an attack option again because i did not go through the dialogue once again i did not as well because the leech hit me so hopefully the next yuri step here or anywhere will only have the emote step and not the kill step which takes me literally 10 minutes so once again, I'm a lucky man. I have over 100 Ring of Lives from Magpie and Planes from way back in the day, mainly whenever I was doing Eclectics. And this allows me to once again rock cake back to my spawn point by using that Ring of Life teleport and use the, <laughs> that guy said take cover. I thought that was almost like my character saying that and use that teleport back to the Ferox Enclave where my clues are stored as well as where all these hubs of teleportation are at and that free stamina pool is. Once again, alternative means of transport. Normally I would air alter teleport with the ring I'm missing, go to my house and use a glory to get to Edgeville, but here it worked out anyways because we have the Ferox spawn point. Another clue step I can do thanks to the Gommel's hilt, but this is the third time I've been at the top of this mountain and we finally got the kill with literally no supplies left. Here's another one that took me about 30 minutes and three world hops of refreshing for the poison and getting some dfs hits on but here we go the casket nothing special all right you might be asking yourself what the fuck is this guy wearing pardon my language but this is the most ridiculous outfit i put on yet but guess what it's my highest magic defense bonus besides rogues maybe which is stored in my house and i don't really want to get it out but yeah this is some good magic defense bonus that's doing nothing because I'm one magic. I really don't even know why I'm wearing it. It's pretty much useless. I should focus on defense because he also has a dagger, but I figured why not just try it out. Probably the worst hard clue reward yet. In this batch, there's only two clues left. I just got a mostly harmless soundtrack I cannot unlock, so we're dropping that. And I hope that we can complete this clue or else it's all for nothing. All right, I actually did it. We got a casket with no clues left. Got very lucky with the uh, precision there of how many clues exactly we needed, but nothing really useful out of that clue. So it's good that I actually did do some star mining earlier because now we have enough to buy a celestial ring. I'm going to use that to maybe buff my mining inside of Guardians of the Rift if that's even a thing, but there it is, celestial ring unlocked. All right, I'm decked out from my possible two days of suffering for more abyssal pearls to get the ring back that I somehow lost. All right, I need pearls. We got like 14 grabs left and we got 
We got an Abyssal Lantern. Well, I guess that helps because I am 90 fire making now. I can put a Redwood in there and no longer have to pay an extra Pearl to fix my pouches. That's pretty good, actually. I think there's some other benefits to this and it's a really rare item, so I'll definitely take it. We just got a Tarnished Locket from an Intricate Pouch. That's actually really good. I can exchange that for the amulet that teleports you here. It's a very good quick access to the Wizard's Tower. I almost said Wizard's Guild. And we just exchanged this here with the Lumbridge Guide for the actual infinite teleporting necklace that's also close to a bank, but not as close as the Farming Guild teleport. I do also have an Abyssal Die I'm going to trade in for a Red Die because I need to make this necklace match my outfit and my new Red Dragon. Dragon mask let's be honest i could trade the abyssal die for 50 more pearls but this game like the whole purpose of it is fashion we all know this in the end you have to choose fashion that's what i'm doing here by uh throwing die on a necklace i mean even look at this fashion right here 11th century stolen valor in red with a weird plate body so after hours and hours of unnecessary play time due to a bug i know i hate bugs uh, we got this weird essence thing I didn't even know existed, which apparently has a 60,000 high alk value, and we also got some more pearls. We're now just like 50 pearls off of finally being able to get our ring back. But before I get it back, I don't even trust myself. I'm gonna try and empty out more of this bank, maybe throw some stuff in Death's Coffer even, because I do not want this happening again, let's just say that. 71 rune crafting wasn't planning on rune crafting anytime soon but we got over base 70 so that's kind of cool i just need 39 more pearls 39 more pearls just give me some okay we got 10 so we still need 29 more pearls but i had to take a break from the game and yes i'm gonna sacrifice the avernic like you all suggested i did test out to make sure it's a 70 attack wreck for an avernic defender if i ever somehow got that and here we are back at guardians of the rift barely just getting 29 pearls from this poll there's literally perfectly 400 pearls now in my bank to buy back the ring all right so we've gotten everything ready we're gonna buy back the ring we're gonna see if it's charged uncharged what's gonna happen here only god knows and me ring of elements is charged so it did not run out of charges whenever i banked it i thought that might be the case like it ran out of charges out of full bank i pressed bank all worn items but imagine if it's like back there in the bank again i would be so like furious um but no it's got my charges still um it's got over 2,000 on it, and yeah, I really I really don't know what happened. See, as you can see, 2,827. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. We're now back to thieving. I'm going to do this for just as long as I possibly can before I get bored or someone crashes me maybe, and then go do some more clue scrolls. And I want to make this clear. I'm not technically overweight, okay? I'm 168 pounds, 5'10". Um, I'm going to give you all my information. <laughs> no, uh, but... I'm not overweight, I have an extremely fat face. And I wear bulky clothing because I'm autistic and I don't like stuff touching my skin. Bulky as in like XL stuff because it's loose fitting. There was some loot I deposited and now we're back here with 93 thieving. We're making headway and we have seven clues. Also fun fact about me, I'm gonna tell you everything about me because why not while I'm juggling these clues. I wear diabetic socks because I hate the little grippy thing in the middle of your foot. It drives me insane, and when I was a kid, all I wore was Nike socks, and they used to not have that, and now they do. And I'm so autistic that I cannot handle that sensation on my feet. There's a level 80 here with a crossbow running around, and I'm so smart that I'm going to go check and see if he's coming towards me and just log off like that. Wow, that's intelligence right there. I'm going to be sticking my foot on my mouth right now, but I'm only banking like once every level, and that's like at least four five six hours per bank because once again i'm such a low combat in 1500 total world and all these peers they don't know how to work together i've seen two level 80s before and they started fighting each other now if i had two level 80s on me mage in me maybe this would be a different story but no it's only ever one because they're never coordinated and they never you know decide to take effort together in killing me only separately we are now at 94 thieving, five more levels to go i might break soon though because i have found and discovered on my alt that there is something going on with the new Varlamor content that just came out, and that is Ring of Recoil charges are not being used on the bosses. And that's actually good because I only have six rings of recoil, to be honest. So I don't know. It's like this, it's like this uh this update catered to me or something. But I might go to about 95 thieving and then call it quits. By the way, remember that door that I got really annoyed about? Yeah. Well I'm just gonna delete it just in case some guy decides to shut it in front of my face again 500 times. Okay, another Berg to Rot step. Can't do that one. Going to drop it in my crap pile. 
yeah, it's barely on the border of being able to do. If it was like right on the fence, I could actually dig right outside and still do it. Ooh, not just all the clues, but look at all this loot we have right here. Just in this one inventory. I think that's 94 to 95 thieving. So this is maybe 200k an hour high alk value after selling to the rogue's chest. I don't even know. I haven't done the calculations, but it's definitely preparing me to spend a lot of money on construction. And magpies is probably going to be the other half of that. So let's complete these clues, then we'll go ahead and do the Varlamore quest line as it's still early in release and I want to get it done, obviously because I don't want to have to get more recoils anytime soon. And who knows, they might make it totally immune to recoil because if it's not using charges, that tells me it's like Hispori and it's supposed to be hitting zeros on the boss. Not quite sure about that one, but we're going to get this done. We're going to farm all these clues back over to Ferox Enclave through the death mechanic I showed earlier and through a nice little friend helping me out. Shout out 1600, by the way, for doing this and sitting there directing me with the hard diary. All right, we've got all of these clues now in Ferox Enclave. I know it's a lot, but it's good to separate this out between thieving for a while and doing clues because I would have to constantly re-gear and go back and forth between the two. I like doing things one at a time. I mean, I was even thinking about going to 99 if it wasn't for this new Varlamor release. Instead, yeah, we stopped at 95, almost 96, and we're going to try and finish these off. I'm also going to separate them out by tier, so I'm going to put the Wilderness ones a little bit apart from the normal ones because, once again, that's a big difference in gear change. Whenever doing the Wilderness steps, I'm not going to be risking as much. But the ironic thing was I got a step in Varlamor. I didn't even know these were out yet. The literal day of release, I got a Varlamor step, so... Yeah, I guess we're gonna go do the quest line now, or at least the first part of it, so we can actually get into the area that we have this hard clue located in, because we can do that hard clue if we do this quest, which is super simple, being Children of the Sun. This clue step is so new, it's not even on the clue helper plugin on Runelite. I'm literally trying to dig around, there it is, to find the spot where it's at. And we got another casket. Let's see what's inside. Nothing good at all. Back in my day, we had to run all the way to the farm and gill, and there was no cart out here to take you everywhere you wanted to go. But now I just use my farming teleport and can go anywhere, so it's actually kind of beneficial to me. Helps with these clue steps a lot. So this is one of those few clues I can do on this unique build, the one by the other fairy ring I was talking about. There's so many Ceridoman wizards for some reason in Trollheim, I don't get it. And this one's always like stuck in a rock every time I summon him. And once again, I always forget my anti-poison, so I literally have to sit with an interface up to stop myself from dying once I get the wizard poisoned. Also, this is a very inconvenient location. I have to run all the way to Crandor for this guy. This clue took 49 minutes, and we got two black dehyde traps. Nice. This kind of step annoys me because it says to talk to the spirit tree, but it doesn't feel like talking. I'm so excited I finally get to use my new amulet to actually complete a clue step for once. Normally I would water altar teleport with the ring of elements, which is not, honestly not that far of a run, but you would have to cross the massive bridge. This clue should have given me all three pieces of melee third age. So I'd say on average I drop three clues per completion, maybe two, two or three, but we're getting through this pile here. And now finally all we have left is the wildy clue steps and we got man i thought that was going to be an actual dragon boot ornament kit that's it's an obby mall i can never wield that and a ceridome and coif purple sweets though like i said i can never complain for purple sweets even though the other two were kind of spoilers but yeah we only have wilderness clue steps left to do now in that pile so we're gonna go about doing those and then do the varlamore quest line all right i just opened one and it's just a bunch of ruin again and sharks I'm trying to help this guy out here. He's got the same step as me. I was like trying to tell him where to dig over and over again, and I think he finally got it. All right, we've got two clues left. Let's hope we get lucky and can actually complete this with only two possible clues to drop. I got super lucky, and we actually did get a casket. A magic compo. I've already gotten that. Not even a collection lock slot, unfortunately. And we're out of clues. Okay, so we did Children of the Sun earlier. Now we're on to the second quest. I don't even remember what this thing is called. I'm just like going through a quest guide, completing this as fast as possible. I don't give a flying fuck about lore, so we're flying through this. We do have to kill one boss, so that's relatively difficult in this quest. There's two methods I could go about doing this. The first one I tried a few times. I did end up getting some hits off on him with melee, which I thought might poison him. I have a 1 in 4 chance of poisoning on hits. I also wanted to check if the Ring of Recoil is broken with this boss, but it's not. It does take charges, so I'm going to take that off and hope that that one hit I just did 
actually poisons him. And if it does, then I'm going to safe spot him, let the poison kill him. Because he is 100 HP, I can technically kill him with just one poison. I also, though, the second method could rely on DFS specs. But as you see there, it looks like he might have high magic defense. I don't know anything about this NPC yet, as new as it is. So, I mean, he, he might have high magic defense and DFS spec is impossible. But he does throw a protect magic after a few attacks. So, I don't think I poison him. I'm going to run in and out a few times now and try and get the poison off before he throws a protect melee and then maybe safe spot him and try that method first. I don't know apparently he's not immune to poison but I've attacked him eight times now with damage and gone in and out it didn't work so instead he doesn't have a despawn timer we're just gonna sit here and try and DFS spec him every now and then. We are slowly actually hitting so his magic can't be that high I thought it was originally because my first two attempts at DFS specking were zeros but ever since then I've been hitting every single time and weirdly enough this NPC has some unique kind of new pathing to him to where he can go around corners so you can't even really safe spot him properly instead i'm just using this red x method here with an interface to safe spot him then going out every two minutes for a dfs spec and eventually he does switch to magic one time where i just kick him a few times or punch him i should say not getting strength xp and then he switches back to melee protect to where i can dfs spec him again the second and last boss fight in this quest isn't even really a boss fight. The other NPCs help you kill them and you could literally just like safe spot them and never fight any of them. Instead though, I'm trying to help out a bit, do some poison damage, they're not immune to poison, and bam, we got the second quest done in the quest line, and now we can actually continue on to Perilous Moon's quest. We got a nice 3000 thieving XP from that as well. We're going to be able to get 40,000 Slayer XP from Perilous Moons, which is actually massive because one day we want 83 Slayer for Dragon Boots. Alright, so the first boss in this quest is a Slayer NPC. Luckily, we do already have 62 Slayer and we can kill this NPC. What I noticed weirdly enough though is it has some weird kind of buff to damage. Look at that. I'm able to hit a 5 even though my max hit is supposed to be a 2 right now. And that really scared me at first. I thought I was like on aggressive or something was going on. But no, that's just how the NPC was intended to be made. So maybe some kind of unique defense training method here in the future. If you could maybe lower these NPCs defense down. I know there's more of these inside of the actual city that we're going into. So... Who knows? Alright, I went into the horrible maze-like city inside of this to do part of the quest that took quite a while, but now we're on the actual boss phase of the quest, which is really the only difficult part, apparently. I could actually death pile food in here. It's not an instance, but it does close if there's no one in here. But there's so many people. I'm on world 330. Apparently, they do contribute somewhat to the health of the boss going down, and my recoil is going to be contributing tons because, once again, our recoil charges are not going down to these bosses. I don't know if it's just because they're not supposed to be intendedly used against these bosses they might be immune but look at this this in itself could be some kind of training method as i'm just whacking eights constantly on those pillars there so defense peers there's some cool stuff out there with this new update not a whole lot a lot of it's scaling but i believe pretty much anyone can get this quest done especially with a recoil now the mains do contribute damage but i think it's like fractionalized or something um, and even a 10 HP I saw with a Thrall was able to hit the one and complete this quest as you do need to hit at least one real damage so that's the key here. I need to get an XP drop on each of these NPCs at least once and just barely we're able to hit one time on this boss before it dies to natural causes being the other players and my infinite recoil here. Now if I didn't get the one true damage it would just be sitting at one HP indefinitely until I got it. So we had plenty of food left and plenty of supplies even without the new food I decided not to make that i don't understand how this boss gets a cutscene, but the other two don't yeah i guess he's just more special than those two nothing special once again i just have to get that singular hit off so we're using a three tick weapon plus our best crush bonus with the dwarven helmet and super sets and once again i do only hit this thing one time in the entirety of its 500 hp going down it's a good thing i did bring super sets the dfs spec also is not very effective on this thing Fortunately, we got it down with recoils and assistance of people in 330 massing this thing. Now for the last boss. Blood Moon, once again, rinse and repeat, just has different specials that I'm not used to. I went into all of these blind, didn't really know what I was doing, besides supposed to be standing on this colorful circle here. And once again, we only hit once on this boss, and that was it, but it's enough to get us the kill credit. And basically, just use our infinite recoil once again, rinse and repeat, eat food, yada yada yada. And we got the Blood Moon kill. So there we have it. Honestly, not that bad of a quest at all, especially for the 40,000 Slayer XP reward. This was much quicker than what I'll be having to do in the future, which is Wilderness Slayer with alts and 
probably actually like two or three times the rate in the amount of time I completed this quest. And I'm satisfied with that. We got some runecrafting XP as well, hunter and fishing XP, 106 quest points. And I believe with all these new quest releases, we might be getting closer to a possibility of completing 150 quest points. I don't know. I think the calculation's a little bit off still, but after a few more quest releases, that should definitely be possible for a third block task before we go about Wilderness Slayer and the future for those dragon boots. So the other account I was working on, Sneak Peek, is a Bloodhound at 3 combat, and I also found out by doing this that no, Clue Scrolls don't reset on the ground after a server update, so my friend informed me incorrectly, and we didn't need to do that batch of clues before. But far more happened anyways, so whatever. I spent a couple hours gearing this all tier I forgot I had. This account has not done the Barbarian training, and I saw on the wiki page recently that Barbarian training had been updated as well though the wiki article updated the smithing portion to say you either need fishing or fire making not just fishing to do barbarian smithing which would be huge meaning i could get chewed bones finish the fire making portion then possibly get a hosta on my defense bear i wanted to obviously test this first because these are immune to poison venom all of that so we'd be wasting a lot more recoils and food killing these for a 1 in 50 ish chance at getting the chewed bones so I spent a long time here, it took me over 80 kill count, went almost double the drop rate dry to get these chewed bones, and now we're going to place them in a pyre ship, which does not give per XP by the way, to finish the fire making but not the fishing portion of barbarian training. And I'm doing this because once again I want to see if finishing the fire making portion now after the recent update has changed like the wiki said and allows for barbarian smithing. This would be amazing as a host is a huge upgrade over the bone dagger while equipping the dragonfire shield that my defense spear has. So I'm now telling Otto I completed making a pyre ship, which doesn't seem to do anything here. Unfortunately, it seems like the people on wiki are just like trolling me because I noticed before the wiki said, you do need barbarian fishing, hard requirement. Then it said, you need barbarian fishing or fire making. And then I check again about a week after this, and then it goes back to saying, you need barbarian fishing completed. So I don't know what's going on over there, but yeah, we should be hitting 96 thieving now. We're back at rogues, back doing our very entertaining lifestyle of pickpocketing rogues chests for eight hours a day. And there we go, that should be 96, and we already have some more clues on the ground. I'm gonna try and do this to 99, but who knows. By the way, I'm just now realizing my dog snores a lot in the background of these videos and audio recordings, so I do apologize for that. Um, I kind of just tuned it out, it happens so much. She's uh, She snores even when she's awake, okay? She's got breathing problems. This guy is back on me again. Some days he decides to just like give up and stop attacking me. Other days he'll go all for it, waste his ruins on me and waste my food. And I'll just have to climb these stairs over and over again and log out. So I reset up the world and now he's back. Right as I got all the rogues into place. This is kind of getting somewhat annoying. So we're almost 97 thieving now, but instead of continuing to 99 with all these clues on the ground, I decided I'm going to do a batch of them again because this guy is literally hunting me down every second. I can't even like thieve without wasting time. So it's a perfect time to do clues, I guess. And our friend Bolts is helping us out getting to the chest so we can death pile our clues back at Ferox Enclave. All right, after about 15 minutes of death piling these, we've got them back at Ferox Enclave, and now I'm gonna sort them by which one's wilderness, which one's not, once again, because it just lessens the amount of time I need to swap gear out. But this is a good batch. It's not our biggest batch of clues yet, but this should get us probably, I would say, five completions, if we're lucky, maybe four. So we're gonna go do these and see what we get from those chests. I kind of thought of something ridiculous here. Apparently one of the proposed changes coming out soon or being pulled soon is that Barbarian Agility Course gives Strength XP and that would really suck if just going through that first obstacle pipe, not the whole course, somehow gave me Strength XP and ruined my account because this is a nice clue step. It's one of the few ones I can actually do on the hard clues. While doing this batch of clues, I also discovered probably the worst Ceridome and Wizard location. It's with all of these lizard men just attacking me along with it in multi-combat. It's not fun, but I did find a safe spot over here by just hugging this around the corner and getting the lizard men trapped in the body of the wizard. Our first clue casket off of these hard clues here, 23 per purple sweets like i said can't complain with any purple sweet drops another idea i just had is that these clue steps there's two of them with zami wizards one inside the arena and one right outside of it they're going to be very hard to do come next week whenever this place is super busy and there's people running agility laps for countless amounts of gp basically yeah there's an update where you're going to be able to run agility laps for supplies coming out i believe this coming week all right our second casket 
Oh, a new unique, Ancient Dehyde Boots. I guess a collection log slot, but we're never gonna be able to wear those because we're one range. My daily ban scare has occurred while in the wilderness this time. Um, it's not a good thing to ever DC, but especially while you're out here in the wild. An awful loot here. What, what more do I expect, honestly? Number four off this batch of clues, I got some purple sweets, so that's good. I really don't know how I ever got this fire cape done without DCing. Well, I actually did DC twice on Jad, I think, but I, I don't know how I completed it, honestly. It was a 130 hour cave. Fifth and final clue, I actually predicted the number of clues I would complete. A ruined cane, pimp daddy cane, baby that I can never wear because I'm not 40 attack. Hey, we should pull removing attack requirements from canes, make them defense pure weapons, yeah? Back to the chest once again, we're already stacking up clues and we're getting 97 thieving right here. Two more levels. I've been too lazy to continuously delete this door as it respawns in 10 minutes anyways when it shuts. Oh, okay, well this guy just ran away anyways. He just gave up. That's actually surprisingly not the first time that's happened. These people just start attacking me. You see that I'm 99 HP and safing like 120 health and have 85 defense and they just give up. Even with magic, I have plus 15 magic defense on right now and it's not that bad at all. Honestly, it's also easy to log out with no rogues on me. I've also realized I can do something rather than just sit around watching my friends die. But they're not even friends really. I, I make I made a friend with this guy like five minutes ago, but I'm gonna try and help. Okay, well he's beyond help. I was gonna try and help him out by opening the door, but there's there's just too many. Oh my God, there's even more. It's, it's pretty entertaining to train thieving out here as a low level, I'm not gonna lie. I would recommend this method to any low level, especially ones that can access higher total worlds because yeah, yeah, you get to have dinner, a movie, and a show, and get some thieving XP all while you're here. 98 thieving, so that's 97 to 98. I have not banked yet. There's a lot of clues on the ground. I'm gonna go bank and then do 98 to 99. All right, that is a lot of loot. That's probably like three mil plus high elk value from that level. We got out safely and can deposit that in our bank. I have noticed something a little annoying. I've been getting poisoned like right there as well as venomed sometimes even though I outmaneuver these people and I, it does make me go bank but there's kind of a good part of that which is forcing me to you know deposit my looting bag supplies every time I do bank. And yeah, here we go again. If this guy looks familiar, well he is. He's been on my ass on and off for days and so yeah, sometimes he just gives up and logs out like that. What the hell? Is he gonna attack me? I'm just gonna like just keep thieving and see what he does. Nope, he locked out. Okay, maybe he got the message. So a quick break from thieving. I'm using this debug tool and I am in the beta now. We can get weird combinations of equipment I normally wouldn't be able to get. See if we can wear it, see what kind of uses it has. I'm probably not going to actually be testing out the beta as intended, but I'm going to be testing out other things I normally can inside the main game worlds. And one of those is I wanna see if I can get over 100 magic bonus and see if it counts outside of Bounty Hunter as maybe someday I'll have to fight people in Bounty Hunter and get Bounty Hunter points. Because although you can't attack with armor and weapons outside of BH, I want to see if they retain the stats they do. Because if I can get Zuriels with only a 78 defense requirement, that should be able to put my magic, I believe, just slightly over 100 for a Master Clue Step. Yes, I will be doing Master Clue Steps and juggling them in the future, and there's a very limited amount that I can actually do, so this helps a lot. I don't know how the hell that's gonna work because my account is terrible for PvP, but maybe someone can like fight me to the death or something with with or without food. Who knows? But yeah, this armor does work. Well, it doesn't work, but it has stats outside of PvP. You just can't use it. And this is kind of good. I can maybe actually get an extra master clue step done. Another thought I had was if I can't attack with this armor on, can I at least use its bonuses to tank aggressive NPCs? Like maybe Hispori's mage attack? This is like over 150 magic defense bonus sitting here in Morgans. Maybe I'll have to spend even more time in BH getting the points for something like Morgans as well as Zerials. I don't know. I'm still theorizing a possible way to kill Hispori, which is just gonna involve me tanking him for a long period of time. And this could definitely help. I also wanted to check if there's any hard wrecks on the Iron Hosta, and there is not, you just need the Barbarian Training portion, so if you could please update that Barbarian Training to allow for them to be done in any order, because everything else can be done in any order except for the smithing, that would be great, because this Hosta, not only is it better than my Bone Dagger, but it looks amazing. I look like an actual main, and I'm 50 combat right now in this beta world. As well, Dragon Defender, one day we're going to get that, Dragon Boots, one day we're going to get those. I don't know, we're just manifesting right now. We're manifesting our future to see what it's gonna be like once this account is at its very max potential. 
One issue I did have with the beta is I'm not sure if they took off the zero to max hit portion because they were talking about changing that from one to max hit, which would help my account's accuracy a lot because I don't like rolling zero hits. It would make my future fire capes easier and it would just make pretty much everything a little bit better for me. It's not, you know, I don't need it, but I'm just wondering if the beta has it or if all the zeros in this beta are true misses and not zero hits. Another thing I wanted to address was the only problem I have with the beta is the base airstrike being a 5. This kind of kills a lot of venom alting with airstrike. I know it's not intended to be used to boost Iron Man kills, but it's super slow already and it's a really niche method and I think it's kind of cool and unique to have in the game. So unfortunately, instead of hitting only a 1 or 2 with airstrike, which compensates for a lot of NPCs high health regeneration, we're going to be looking at hitting 5s on my venom alt accounts that have higher magic. And if we wanted to say stay 20 mage should only hit a one with airstrike that would work perfectly fine but we would also need 75 defense for the serpentine helm on those accounts and eventually their magic is going to get pushed up and up and up and the account's going to become useless so it just puts a lot of more effort into something for niche accounts 10 hp accounts defense accounts attack accounts all kinds of unique builds I think these people have scouted me out because I have never seen two organized peers hop into a 1500 total world yet. They're both already just camping full magic gear. It's like they knew I was here. They're, they're putting in a very hardcore effort of killing me right now. And honestly, they're probably going to do it. Unfortunately, I'm 30k off of 99 thieving right now. Yeah, we haven't banked since like 98.3 thieving. We probably have 3 mil high alks on us. And I really just wanted to get this level done. And I was so close to getting it done. Should have been quicker. Should have been like Sonic. Should have gotten in and out of this place. But no, we just actually died and lost 3 mil high alk value to crazy lesbian. Damn it. That was well done. Like I said, no other coordinated peers hopping in 1500 total worlds till now with good gear. So kudos, honestly. I also realized I lost a glory. So we're down to 34 glories now from Dragon and Planes. Oh no. Lost some black gloves as well. Went back to buy my HP cape for 100k. Then went here to buy my dwarven helm for, I think that was 60k. Something tells me that they're going to be back. So I'm going to try and hurry up, lure the rogues back in place, and then get this 30k thieving XP. And we're not even close. I've been here for two minutes after reluring the rogues. And I've actually gone up and down the stairs quite a few times. But I've gotten caught every single time at some point. Was not able to log out. And we have one Brutus left. So that's probably a good game as we're now refrozen again. We can't even climb back up or down the stairs. I think I'm going to go somewhere else for the last 20k XP. Ironically, we're back at the most hated thieving activity, and that is black tracking to finish off our 99 thieving. There we go, our fourth 99 on the account. And we got 99 thieving before our clues disappeared off the ground. So now I'm going to juggle these all one more time, reset the one hour timer on them. Then I'm going to pick them up and die with them one at a time with a hard achievement diary account helping me out. This will be 25 minutes of just death piling clues here. As you can see on the timer on the bottom of the screen, it took a long time as this time there were more clues than ever before. Look at this. I think that's like 35 clue scrolls I have on the ground. I'm thinking I can maybe get 10 clues completed with this around there if I'm lucky. So I am actually pulling out a master clue for every casket, at least whenever I remember and dropping it before opening the casket in hopes to get another master clue and juggle some master clues, but we're not quite ready yet for those master clues, honestly. I need to get some skills up. I'm lacking about three requirements, plus possibly now Zerials. I believe my prediction long ago worked itself out. I did not have to kill Yuri this time and he just gave me the clue step, so let's teleport out before finishing the dialogue to do that once again, hopefully for the next time I get a Yuri step that I can complete. This is our second hard clue casket and no uniques, but some good high elks there. Another one, nothing really that great. By the way, I found this awesome plugin on the plugin hub. You can shift right click that in the top left of your screen to see all your clue timers. I can know when my clues are about to expire off the ground. I think that plugin is called clue juggle timer on the plugin hub. So yeah, if you're ever as insane as me, note that down. It might help you out quite a bit. We've gotten a lot of the clues out of the way, especially in the non-wilderness stack. Wow, that's a lot of high elk value. That's four pieces of rune. Whatever, I'll take it. Come on, three-third HP. Oh, okay. Uh, Armadale Plate Body. I can't ever wear that because Dragon Slayer gives me strength XP. I get so many of the same steps out here that I literally have old clues from I forgot even when I did them still sitting out here, probably about to expire now. I rock cake ring of life to back to the Ferox Enclave and I saw that there's still people actually luring in 2024 and they're doing it like at 
the ditch slash barrier like they did back in 2005. People really need to get more creative with this shit. Another soundtrack clue I can't do, it requires Death Altar, which requires Underground Pass, Mornings in Part 1, and that gives attack XP and requires range. I come back here and there's literally just a blowpipe sitting on the ground. Nothing good, nothing good at all. We are now on our Wilderness Steps and more Ruin Armor. That is another Ceridomen Coif. Not even a collection log slot because we now have duplicates of that item. We have four clues left. If I'm really lucky, I can complete two. If I'm about average luck, I can complete one. So let's see what happens. Once again, just stray clues all over the ground from steps I don't even remember doing. This might be our last casket. We have gotten another master clue. Doubt I can do the steps. There's so many I can't do on masters. Let's see. No, I cannot wield a Legends Cape or a Death Tiara, so we're going to drop that. I'm kind of actually glad I can't do that step yet because I really don't have all the requirements I want for Master Clues. Ironically, we have the last clue right now, and it's at the location we've been at for most of this video, and this is going to be step three. I doubt I can complete this, but let's see. I can't actually talk to the Spirit Train Tree Gnome Village, even though I should be able to. You need Tree Gnome Village quest completed, and we can't do that because it gives attack XP. That's it for the clues. I'm 99 thieving. I got 333 Dagonoth Rex kills. I had to get my ring back from a glitch. I tested some things on Beta Worlds. And we're now at 43 hard clue completions with no Dragon Ornament Boot Kit, no Amulet of Glory trimmed, and lastly, of course, no Third Age. I could never get that lucky. Hopefully next time I see you all will be very soon. Go over and follow my kick channel. I hope to have big plans on there in the future and have a more consistent upload schedule here on this channel to do with kind of those live streams. So there's going to be a big upgrade to this channel, I would say in late April, early May. Hope to see you with that. These videos though will still be ongoing, just casual progression for the defense account as it does still have a lot of goals to complete. And lastly, if you enjoyed today's content, please do subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, whatever. I love chatting with people. Come in my Discord. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. See you next time.